Hello, it's Jason Archer here. Uh, I'm with Beef and Lamb Genetics as a genetic specialist, and I'm here with uh, Bill Austin today from Austin's Ultrasound. Um, Bill's one of the leading um, beef class assessors, which is basically about physical assessment of beef, of beef bulls. And so we're going to talk to Bill today. He's going to show us about um, assessing bulls from a phenotype point of view and, and their structure um, and what you need to look for as a commercial bull buyer. So if I'm, a, if I'm going to buy a bull, what, what are we going to look for? In, in the phenotype of a bull, we, we want a bull that's functional yep. and going to be functional for a number of years. Um, and that involves having his legs um, in the right place, um, not straight shouldered, um, good claws on, on the ground, primarily depth of heel yep. is, the, is the important one for me and then enough angle in their back legs to, for mobility and for serving cattle without breaking stifles and things. So presumably some of this is also about what he passes on to his daughters that are going to be in your herd? Yes, a absolutely. And, and everything that is graded and or measured is either going to add profit or cost you money. Yeah. So yeah, there's no fads in the system as in colour here and colour there. Yeah. It's about practical functional cattle. So there are some things that people look at um, maybe when they're buying bulls that maybe aren't necessary or cost, don't make you money anyway? Absolutely. My recommendation is that it's, it, if the trait makes you money then look at it. If, it, if it's a fault it's going to cost you money then look at that and leave the rest out and ignore overall body weight at sale time and overall condition because there's fed cattle in this country and there's bred cattle in this country. Plus we also want to pay some attention to EBVs and numbers at the same time? I'm on the end of the industry where I think you select the set of EBVs that's relevant for your country mm -hmm. and then go to that place that has the most bulls of that type and then of the ones that fit your data spec, pick the best, most functional bull that you can find. Try and not get distracted by those bulls that might look the part but don't quite Yes. Don't quite stack up with the numbers, that's the, that's the message? Absolutely. But it's a balance between the two. Absolutely. It's yeah. not one or the other, it's both. Now the last thing we do is, is temperament. And this bull's had time to settle down now, and, and now we can make a judgement on his temperament. For me, I look at the eyes, irrespective of colour, I want a bone hood out over the eye, eyeball. And this bull has, has that to perfection. Um, I don't score it, but I've seen it as he came in and I know I can handle this bull in here on, on the basis of how that eye is set. The scoring is in reverse, so a one is perfect and to get a one I need to be able to hold that bull in the corner and get my hand on him. And I can do that. So he scores a one, even though he moved around to start with, he had to get used to me, he had to get used to the fact that he was on his own. Um, and from there, a two is a bull that maybe I can hold in the corner and get my stick on, but I can't get my hand on. And then a three, he's going around here fairly quick, quickly. Um, a four is trying to jump out, and a five, well, I got out quite some time ago. We've got an eye that's out of, not as protected by a, a bone hood, it's out of the head a bit. And so you'd always be a bit more wary of an animal with the eye that's not protected by a bone hood. He's a good example of that, and he does spook a wee bit at a shadow. He's just about past a two and a half. He's, he's, I'd give him a three. And his temperament is a negative. And then we look at the hoof on the front at the claw set and a, a perfect is two hooves together and straight. Um, a little bit of curl is natural and we get a lot more sixes and fours than we ever do fives. This bull on that claw set is a six. His claw set is very good too. You can see that's very straight in those front claws and the rear claws as he's standing there. I would score the front claws a five and the rear claws a four. The rear claws are dead straight, 
but he just carries them with that bit of gap. I don't see a problem with that. The description of four tells you exactly what they are and they are very functional and very sound when they're shaped like that. And the front hoof is straight enough for a five for me. It's a debate between a five and a four, but they're close enough, in my opinion, for a five. See this here, he's a seven for front claw. If you see this outside front claw here, is growing around the inside claw and it's actually cracked and that will break off. So he becomes a seven for front claw set. So Bill, is that seven, is that something you're gonna worry about? No, I can tolerate a seven for front claw set provided there's good angulation at the back of the hoof. Yep. And this bull is exactly that. There's enough heel in that bull on his hoof to keep those feet up and so they will continue to wear and while that toe is starting to break off it will break off and heal and regrow again. Front claws are a, are a seven and a bad seven really. There's quite a lot of curl in the toe and it lifts when he walks. The important one for me, more important than claw set, is the amount of heel. It, on the chart that you'll see in sale catalogues, it's called hoof angle. From the heel line to the ground, on that front hoof, has a really good depth. And that's about 40% of the length of the hoof on the ground. <clears throat> so it's what... almost like you're trying to draw a line from that back, back of the hoof right to the front toe. Yes, and, and 40, 60. 40 to 60. His heel depth, he lacks a little heel depth, so he gets a seven for heel depth. He's a seven on that front angle, Judy, and a six on the rear, but a blooming good bull. He's worse than a seven on the rear angle. He's an eight for me on the rear angle because when you look at him, the hairline at the back of his hoof is actually touching the ground. Then we go to side view, and that bull standing there now, we're looking at the angle of the back leg around the hock, down to the fetlock and onto the ground, is to watch the bull walk and see where his back feet land, and they are landing exactly where the front feet leave. And when he pulls up there now, you can see that good angle in the back leg, and that is for mobility, for walking, and for serving function, because when a bull mounts a cow, if that back leg is too straight, as soon as he mounts the cow, the angle is all gone out of that leg. So when he goes to serve her and, and get her in calf, there's no angle left on the leg and he'll break his stifle. A lot of New Zealand cattle get a six for that rear angle, which is slightly overstepping, and that is not really a fault. That is, is a plus really, because a cattle beast that oversteps is generally very mobile. And can, and can walk well. Um, but a, a, a five and a six are perfectly all right in, in a leg set and, and are extremely functional. He oversteps when he walks and so he would score a six, but it does make him very mobile. You can see his back foot lands in front of where his front foot leaves. Um, there's nothing wrong with that. He scored with that and it, it tends to just make him mobile. Just we don't want a bull that steps a full uh, hoof distance further on than that because then he um, is quite sickle hocked um, and, and not as sound in that so area. So on the sickle hocked versus post legged sort of side of things, if you were going to err on one side, which side would you err on? I'd err on the sickle hock. With the straightness of those back legs, he's a four. And if when he's just ambling along, his back feet don't get to where his front feet leave. Whereas the other bulls we've been looking at have all stepped into their own, in or just slightly in front of, which is preferable to that. The next thing we do is we look from behind and we're looking for the same as we did in the front. We want a good width between the legs without being way too wide and we want him tracking so that his back feet track in where his front feet are 
and this bull I would give a six from behind, he's just a wee bit closer than is perfect, but still perfectly functional. If, if the back legs from behind are bandy-legged, bow-legged, yeah. then you'll see a lot of walking on the outside hooves. And that is worse than hocks that are in a little bit. A six for rear view or a five are perfect for me. Yeah. If you get to a, um, a four from behind, then the hocks are out a bit and the feet are in. So you've got a bandy leg yeah. and they tend to walk on their outside and you do get bull injuries with that because when they, once again, when they mount a cow, <clears throat> all the weight is on those hocks. Yeah. And so the pressure goes out and, and you end up with a lame bull fairly quickly. You're a seven from behind. He's cow hocked from behind. That's hocks clo very close together. Then we get a look at the front of the bull and its front view. And it's something you don't actually have to be in front to see. Once you get used to looking at it, you can see it from the side. The bull is pulled up pretty well there with his legs apart. Um, and with a good room between his, under his brisket, between his knees. But he's not quite perfect, but he's perfectly usable. He scores a four from the front because he's a wee bit wider up at the brisket in, in his upper leg. So we've looked at the front. I've scored him a four for being a wee bit wide, a wee bit bandy legged. I'll give you five for front view. So that's your straight up four. In fact, that's worse than a four. That's a three in the front. The first thing we can see is the sheath um, as the bull learns to settle down in the pen um, and <clears throat> it scored five when it's right neat up against the body but a four is perfectly all right and I would score this bull a four. Um, he's not, if he gets a bit lower than that then he becomes a three. A, a five, four and three are quite functional um, and quite capable of doing the job and it's a matter of preference which of those you'll tolerate in, in your herd. And that's a, a good example of a perfect five score for sheath. It's tucked up uh, against the body um, and the end of the sheath is on an angle pointing forward, not straight up and down. So uh, he's set up for maximum efficiency when serving cows. So he's a three for sheath. Bill, there's a lot in this beef class assessment, and to be honest, I might not remember it all when I go and buy a bull. What are the top three things that you want me to remember when I'm looking at a bull, apart from figures, yep. but from the structural assessment, what are the most important three things I've got to remember? It's heel depth. If the heel depth, or hoof angle, as it's called in the criteria, if, the, if that's better than adequate, then most of the rest will fall into place. Then mobility, Obviously a bull and a cow has got to move around country to feed and to reproduce and temperament. 